Welcome to the second in the CC3D series. In the first video, we actually built this uh, frame. And again, thank you to Banggood.com for sending me this kit that had the frame and all the other parts in it, even came with things like the battery. So the only thing I'm really having to add here is um, a receiver. Um, the thing we're going to do in this video is take this frame from where it is at the end of the first video to the point where we can actually test hover it and fly it. And to do that, we're going to have to connect up the speed controllers and the motors to the CC3D. And then we're also going to have to connect the CC3D to the radio receiver and bind the radio receiver to a new model on the radio. Once that is all done, then we're at a place where we can connect the CC3D to the computer using a USB cable and flash the firmware onto it so that it has um, an operating system. Then we'll do all the calibration routines and then finally we'll get to fly it. So in this video, we're first of all going to go through the power system. We'll talk about switched versus linear uh, BECs and what those are compared to ESCs. Uh, we'll also talk about the fact that the motors need to be a particular way round. Then we'll talk about the receiver and how we connect the receiver to the CC3D. Once we've done all that, we'll download the software, go through the wizard, install everything, balance the props, fit them, and do the test hover. So the first thing we need to talk about then is power. So this little board actually runs on five volts. And because the battery that we have is actually a 12 volt three cell LiPo pack, actually has 11.1 volts written on here, but a fully charged LiPo pack is 12.4 volts, we need to drop the 12.4 volts down to a battery voltage that this can handle. And the clever bit is, is inside each of these speed controllers, there is something called a BEC, or a battery eliminator circuit. Now the battery eliminator circuit, or BEC's job, is to take the 12 volts from the battery and drop it down into 5 volts that we understand. Now, the trick with this is, is there are uh, two or three main types of BEC. The ones in this kit are actually linear. If I grab the manual, for these, I think, you might not be able to see it here, but it actually clearly says that the BEC mode for the Simon 12A are linear BECs. That's great news, because that means we can just plug all the wires in side by side, because the way this works is that there's a ground wire, the middle wire, which is like a red one, is the plus five volts, and the top one, which is orange in this case, is the signal, and what we need to do is with a linear, we can just plug them all in as they are. If it was said something like it was a switched BEC, we'd unhook all of these red wires apart from one, and that would be responsible for running the CC3D. As it's linear, it's dead easy. All we need to do is just find the cable with number one on it, and then we plug that into the um, location on the board that has number one written by the side, and you'll notice it says that the negative pins on the outside, positive is in the middle, signals on the inside. So we plug pin one into motor one, pin two into motor two, pin three into output three, and four into output four. And there we go, it's that easy. So that's what it looks like when it's all connected, and that's why writing the numbers on in the first step that we did in the first video makes that piece a piece of cake. So that's it, we have all of the electronics for the motors connected. The next thing we're gonna to have to do then, of course, is we're going to have to now connect this board to the receiver. Top tip here just before we get into the receiver is how we have the motors connected. Now we have it all wired into the CC3D. The last thing to think about is in the kit that we get, uh, we have four motors obviously, but they're slightly different. Two of them are designed to turn um, anti-clockwise, two of them are designed to turn clockwise. Make a note of the coloured nuts on the top of each of the motors. The two silver top motors should be in these two positions, the two black top motors need to be in these positions. 
It isn't a disaster if they're not that way round. Um, all it means is that if the nut becomes loose and they're the wrong way round, the motor's rotation actually spins the nut off. If it's this way round, it's much safer. If it gets loose, um, the nut will actually be kept in place by the rotation of the um, prop. So just be aware of that when you're building this. Um, so now we've got that tip, let's do the receiver. So let's remind ourselves of the connection diagram that we looked at in video one. This is the diagram from the GCS software itself. So we've already done the motor things on the right hand side. So we've connected those and we'll double check the rotation when we actually do the calibration in a minute. It's the now the receiver stuff on the left hand side that we're interested in. Now, when all of these are connected like this shown in the diagram, it's called PWM, uh, pulse width modulation. And what happens is the channel on each um, pin actually sends out the control signals for each of the controls. So the throttle sends the throttle, the roll sends the roll, etc. etc. Now, if we just go to the desk, uh, the trick I found with this, the easiest way to do it, is the cable is exactly the same as the diagram. So if we just keep the diagram in the top right hand corner, you can see that the top pin that actually has all three wires in it um, actually goes to the throttle. So I've used my same pen trick again and I've written T on that one. The next cable, which is a light blue one, is supposed to go to, it's very fiddly because these wires are really small. The next one which is blue should go to roll or roll is aileron. So I've written an A and all the way down I've actually marked it up. Now that's gonna make it really easy to plug in. The cable itself just plugs into the side of the CC3D like so. And then now I actually have each of these cables marked up I can just plug them into my receiver. So T is throttle, and again, be careful to watch your polarization, so make sure that you know which one the signal cable. I know the signal cable is actually the white one, so the throttle goes in the throttle channel, like so. Next cable that I'm going to pick up will be the blue one, and that is the aileron and the aileron will go into the aileron channel. Be aware there's only one cable here, it's only the signal that it wants because the power is being supplied through the throttle cable already, through the black and the red wire, so we don't need to worry about that. A, a for aileron goes into the aileron channel, and so on. So let me just plug each of these cables into the receiver, and then we'll have that bit finished as well. We'll obviously need to make sure that this is bound to the radio, ideally on a new model, and that model can either be acro or uh, helicopter, doesn't matter which. The only trick is if you're going to select helicopter, make sure you select a one servo swash. That's make sure there's no swash mixing, which will make the setup confusing. So if you just do that bit, then we should be ready for the last step. So let me just finish this and show you what it looks like. So here we have it all connected up. So you can see now that the throttle channel is the only one that actually has three wires. All of the other connections just have the one signal wire. The only thing you need to be aware of is the flight mode is actually plugged for me into auxiliary one because I know that's the one on my radio that I'm going to get a couple of positions out of. Now we've done that, I think it's about time we actually connected the CC3D onto the frame. Uh, we're going to use the foam that actually came with the kit and stick it in and also stick and locate the receiver as well. And then we're ready to install the ground station control software onto the PC and start flashing this little thing with a brain. So here we are in the netbook and to download the OpenPilot software, uh, the first of all is you can go to openpilot.org, go to docs and software and click on software downloads and that will take you to a wiki page um, just off the top of which you will find the links to the latest version. Now the latest version I have here is OpenPilot release 15.01 Windows 32.exe. If you right click and then say save target as, you'll be able to save it wherever you want. Now I've already done that, so that is on my desktop. 
So here it is on the desktop, so we'll double click it and we'll install it onto the netbook. So we're going to select English as the language and then we'll go through all of the standard things. Okay. Okay, so finally we are finished. So that probably took about five minutes to do the device driver installation. So we'll click finish, and I'm guessing we're almost there now. So forget about show readme, but we will run OpenPilot GCS. So here we are on the netbook. We shall start the ground station control software. Uh, I'll also start the camera so that we can have eyes on both the model and also the uh, remote control as well as part of the process because what we're going to do is actually go through each of the stages for the vehicle setup wizard. Now the vehicle setup wizard itself is a fantastic way to set up your first quadcopter so it's going to step us through each of the processes at the moment we don't have a battery plugged in and um, the ground station control setup wizard will take us through each of the steps calibrating the radio making sure the speed controls are set up that the uh, motors are turning the right way and will let us know when we need to plug batteries and things in as well so it's fantastically safe and very easy to do be aware we haven't got any props installed at this point that's for safety so if we do have the motor start then the worst it'll do is just make a loud running humming noise on the bench so here we have um, the open GCS pilot we'll actually plug the board into the computer we've already got it plugged into a USB cable we'll now plug that USB cable into the PC It's obviously going to install the device driver on the computer. Okay, so that now seems to have finished. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go through the vehicle setup wizard. So let's do that next. So as we can see now at the bottom, the connection has uh, automatically come up. So we are connected to the machine, which is great. We see COPS control. Um, we've had a warning to say that the version of the firmware is out of step with the version of the control. That means that this board has been supplied with a version of the firmware already on it, which is great because that means that it uh, has probably gone through some rudimentary testing before shipping, which is promising. We're going to go through the vehicle setup wizard here. And this is going to step us through everything we need to do to get this board to go. So we'll click on Vehicle Setup Wizard. First thing it's going to do is make sure that all the props are removed, which it is. Um, there's a Next or Cancel button down here just off the edge of the screen. Because of my resolution, um, you can't quite see these two, um, but I'm going to click on the Next button. And it's going to ask me to upgrade the firmware, which I'm absolutely going to do. I want to use the latest and greatest. So I'm going to click on upgrade. It's going to bounce the board. Once the board restarts, it's now going to push down the brand new firmware onto the board. And again, this looks great. It looks like the board is very happy. It's accepting the firmware. Board updated. Press next to continue, which will do that. Okay, to continue, the wizard needs to determine the configuration for Open Pilot. So we're going to click next. It's obviously PWM. We talked about this. We can um, have PPM, which is a single cable, S bus, or we can use the satellite receiver. We have cable that up for PWM where there's lots of individual cables, so that's why we need it. We'll click next. We're obviously going to use it for a multi-rotor here, but we could connect this up to a fixed wing um, helicopter or even some kind of boat, buggy or um, ground vehicle. We're going to keep it on multi-rotor. I'm going to click next. 
I'm going to ask us which we want to use. Obviously, it's Quadcopter X. We've seen these before because I copied them for the setup. So we're going to go next. Whether or not we have standard or rapid ESCs. And we'll click next. We, uh, I'll, I'll double check whether or not Rapid ESC will work. I'll put a note if it needs to be changed. Okay, Open Pilot Summary Configuration. That all looks good. There is a connection diagram. So if you're going to create a different model for this, if you click on the connection diagram, it'll actually bring it up. So that's the one that we've been looking at already. But obviously, if we're looking at hex or a wing or a plane or a ground vehicle, it would show it on here. And it gives you the option to save the image as well. We're going to click next, and now we're going to go through the calibration procedure. So we're going to click on calculate. Done, which is good. The gyros and accelerometers are all calibrated, so now the board knows what level feels like. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to set up the um, ESCs. Now normally the way this works is the process will send a high throttle value to the ESC, we'll then plug in the battery, the ESC will see that high throttle value and then remember that, and then the program when we click next will then send the low throttle value and that calibrates the high and low throttle position. Now these Emacs ESCs that we've got as part of this kit have a slightly uh, different way of doing it in that if you keep that high throttle value there for too long it will enter a setup mode so when we're building this kit we need to be a bit careful that when we go and we start the process as soon as we hear two beep beep sounds which will take a couple of seconds we immediately click the next button and that is then going to calibrate the ESCs perfectly for us just something to be aware of if you get to the point where you're starting to hear uh, tones or tunes playing then that's the start of the setup I'll put the link to this manual in the description below so if you want to read up about the actual process you can and also I've got to say a thank you to VP78 who actually uh, pointed me towards this and let me know what was going on so thank you VP I uh, appreciate the help so let's get back to the netbook Absolutely, it says we must remove the propellers from each motor. We've done that. Um, we're going to confirm all safety questions, and then we're going to press the start button to go through everything. So I have removed all propellers and all motors. We have done that. The vehicle is not powered by any external source. We've done that. I can confirm I've read and understood the above instructions, which make sure you have, and click yes. Then we're going to click on start. Now, we're going to... Connect the battery to the airframe. I'm going to turn on the power. We're going to connect the battery. <whistles> Click stop. Okay, there they are ready to go. That should have calibrated all of the ESCs. Next bit. So at the end of that step, it asked us to unplug the battery. We're going to have to re-plug the battery in now because we're going to test each of the ESCs in turn. And obviously that's going to mean that we need the battery power. So we're going to find the neutral um, for the motor highlighted, which is motor one, which is the one here just by the radio. So what we're going to do is we're going to, and then we're going to just increase the output until motor one starts to spin. I'm just going to take it down until it starts to spin stably, or stably. Okay, so it's about it's quite fine control. We're going to have to just play with it to make sure it's as close as we can get it. I'd say there's about right. Click stop. Next. Number two, we're going to do the same thing. Start. We're going to slide the slide it up until it starts running. And we're just catching it just as it's about to 
lowest stable speed, click stop, and then we'll click next. Okay, so now we're into the initial tuning stage, and what we'll do is we'll actually tune the bits and pieces. Now, or we can just go with current tuning. I'll tell you what, we'll keep current tuning for now. We're going to save all that information back to the board. Okay, now we've done that. We know that the motors are connected properly, they're spinning in the right direction, and everything looks good. We've even calibrated the ESC so all the motors will start at the same time. Next thing we need to do then is the transmitter setup wizard. Okay, so now we have the model set up. Let's do that transmitter bit. We'll click on transmitter setup wizard. Okay. So, welcome to the input configuration wizard. Please follow the instructions on screen. Press back at any time. So we'll click next. So we have got it set as um, acro. Although mine's set for helicopter, it is a one swash mix. So there's no swash mixing going on. It doesn't have any collect collective uh, pitch or anything. So we'll keep it as acro. We're going to go on next. It's a mode two. Mod um, so the throttle and rudder is on the left. The um, elevator and aileron are on the right stick, so mode 2 is what we want. Move each control at a time according to the instructions, so move the throttle stick. So we'll move the throttle stick in time. Move the roll stick, so we'll move the roll stick. Move the pitch stick, so we'll move the pitch stick up. And the yaw stick, which is the rudder. Flight mode switch, we'll toggle that. Now, we're not going to do the accessories. Um, we have got one accessory connected here, which is the gear switch. But we'll skip some of these. So we'll skip that, we'll skip that. Please center all controls, including the throttle. I'm going to click Next. And now we've got to move all the controls to their maximum extent. So, easiest way to do it is go to the corners of each of them. We've done that, we click next. Please check the picture below and correct all the sticks to show an inverted movement. So we need to move the sticks and watch it on the screen to see if they move in the same way. So throttle moves in the right way, which is great. Rudder is reversed, so we need to click your as reverse. So now it goes the same way as the sticks. We need to do elevator, which is reversed. Now we could reverse this on the radio, but it's just as easy to do it through here. So we reverse pitch, so now it is the same as the sticks. And also, don't you know it, rolls the same way. So we'll click roll, and now all the sticks match the movement on the screen. We'll go next. Just confirm on the screen that everything is moving in the same way, and we'll click next again. So we'll need to decide how we want to arm the board, uh, otherwise it'll be always disarmed. I would always recommend that we have the throttle at its lowest position and full your right. That way it's the same as APM and multi wee boards. We can keep the arming time out at 30 seconds, but I like it about 15. So we'll save that and then we'll go back to flight mode settings. Go back to, um, now we've done the RC inputs, you should actually be able to see all the channels moving. And we should also be able to confirm that everything's okay, that's good. So the flight mode switch is the last thing we need to do before we're going to put the props on. So at the moment there is flight position one, Flight position two and flight position three are all set for the standard stabilize one, stabilize two, and stabilize three. So we'll give that a go. That looks good to me. Right. Save that. Make sure it's all happy. Now the board and everything is set up. The last thing we need to do is to set the props out of the packet and balance them and then pop them on the top of each of the motors, being careful to observe the way they turn clockwise and anti-clockwise and making sure that they're not installed upside down so any printed labels on these are pointing up. So let me just balance these, pop them on top and then we're ready for our first flight. 
Last thing we can do, uh, just to make sure that the board's installed the right way, just thinking about this, it's probably worthwhile checking. Uh, in theory, the board should be installed so there's an arrow on the case is pointing towards the front of the model and the motor connectors are on the right hand side and the connectors for the receiver are on the left hand side. Just to confirm that that's the case, if we click on this pic of flight data, you can actually see an artificial horizon and a model here at the bottom left hand side of the craft itself. Now if I tilt the nose up, we should see it point to the sky. If I tilt the nose down, and then if I bank it left and right, we should see everything moving in the artificial horizon. Now that is working perfectly, which means the orientation, everything's ready for the board. So, prop time, and then test hover time. So here's the model with the props fitted. So I put the black ones on the back and the coloured ones on the front. Up to you how you do it, but obviously make sure that the props are matching the rotation of each of the motors. So the other thing you need to be careful of, of course, is that the props are on the right way. Let me just show you what that looks like. If I bring this up, hopefully you can see that there's actually um, some printing. 6030 right hand rotation. It, you want to make sure that that printing is on the upside. It's very easy when you're building to get to the last stage and forget to do something as basic as make sure the props are on the right way up. So it's all built. You'll notice I'm actually not using the battery that came with it. Uh, the reason for that is I'm just balancing it. I gave it a quick charge for the test flight and it didn't charge up great. So I'm just balancing it out so that'll be better. So while I had a pack that was charged, I've used this one. And uh, I'll show you the flying test in a second. Last thing I thought it'd be useful to do is actually show you how heavy this thing is. Now we've built it. So let me just get my wife's kitchen scales. Thank you to uh, her for lending me these. There we go, zero grams. I'll pop this on. So the whole thing is only 487 grams, including the battery. And it's hovering at about 50, 55% throttle. So we've got lots of lift. It's quite a nimble little thing as well. Now, what I intend to do with this is to put a camera at the front and some FPV equipment out the back. And I'll do that in a later video. But for now, I think we've done enough talking. Let's see it in action. So as you can see, even with the default tuning, it's relatively stable. It's a little bit windy out in the garden when I'm flying and shooting this, and you can see the descents are slightly wobbly, so there is a bit of work to do on the PID settings. But I'll cover that in a later video in the series, but for now, I'm going to enjoy this and spend a lot of time FPVing in and out the trees and having fun with my new 250 class quad. Thanks for watching, please like, subscribe, and happy flying.